Hey, are you interested in learning more about the whole reality shifting craze? Check out the audiobook, Parallel Universes of Self. It's the Bible of reality shifting worldwide, and I got to narrate it. A direct link is available on HighTimelineBooks.com, or you can get it directly from Audible and Apple Books. Welcome in to the Thursday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast, Thursday, November 7th. Thomas Miller, thanks for joining us. Well, yesterday, as we mentioned, I had to record that episode ahead of the election results, and fortunately, everything went smoothly. I just have a couple of thoughts on the whole situation, specifically related to astrology, and one is about predictions. When I narrated the Elements series by Stephen Forrest, he talked about making specific outcome-based predictions as astrologers, and he used the 2016 presidential election as an example, where Donald Trump surprisingly according to the polls, beat Hillary Clinton. Back then, there was a big headline in the New York Times that chastised or mocked astrologers for not seeing the Trump victory. And it gave legacy media an opportunity to give astrology a black eye. Well, we'll see what happens here because this time (laughs) there's a long list of pretty prominent astrologers who went public with Kamala Harris predictions that she would win. That list has been on Twitter, but it's also on the website skyscript.co.uk. And that guy does an amazing job of putting these together. And he even shows you where the prediction came from and what it was. There's a list for Harris and a list for Trump. But what Steve points out, and I think is just so wise, tapping into somebody who's been doing this for a long, long time, is he says we shouldn't be forecasting one side of the coin we should instead be looking at probabilities because the coin has two sides. Astrology is not this fatalistic, it's going to happen. And pretty much anybody with wisdom knows that. It's the Yogananda, give me the worst time possible by astrology to set anything up and start it, and I will start it, and it will be successful. And he was a practicing astrologer. But he understood the concept. There's two sides to the coin. And that's why we keep hammering that around here, too. And with that, I'm going to step right in it because there are other challenging aspects ahead. We have, in fact, today at 7.32 this morning Eastern, Mercury slows down. It starts to slow down to go into retrograde here in a couple of weeks. It's the shadow period begins this morning. We have a Mercury retrograde starting in November a moon wobble starting in early December. Those two overlap for a little bit. And then we have Mars going retrograde. And then, as I've been narrating in Ray Merriman's Forecast 2025 book, a whole series of dominoes over the next two years. So there's plenty to keep us looking up to the sky and also to be setting our own intentions. And the other thing, just let me say, the system worked. Whether you liked the outcome or not, At least as I'm recording this, the system worked. We didn't have any hanging chads. Nobody's running off to the Supreme Court. It seems like the process that was set up to work did work, which is good. Because there were a couple of indications in the current astrology that indicated that there could be some challenges if that side of the coin showed up. Probabilities. So in our walk, we are always going to look at both sides of the coin. You know that. We always try to look at the positive side, the high timeline side, and at least emphasize that when there's another side of the coin. And we'll keep doing that right on through. This is going to be the next, the next couple of years is going to be absolutely amazing. I've got like this permanent buckled up seat belt going across this chair because I'm not going to plan to go anywhere. This is going to be incredible. One other plug real quick, if you have not listened to the current episode on Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast, oh, I would certainly highly recommend it. A listener asks a question, can you see future incarnations in a natal birth chart? And Robert's answer is absolutely incredible. Let me give you a couple of dates around this Mercury shadow. So today at 7.30 this morning, it starts to slow down. It goes retrograde on November 25th. It stations direct again December 15th, and then by January 2nd, it has cleared the shadow where it was when it went retrograde on 1125. 
overlapping that for a little bit is the moon wobble. It peaks on December 23rd, which is a Monday. Now, the sun will be square to the north and south nodes of the moon. That's December 23rd. You back up either two weeks or three weeks, whichever your preference. So that puts the moon wobble beginning either December 2nd or December 9th. I keep thinking about that Hamas attack last fall in October happened even a couple of days before the 21-day period. So remember, we're the ones that put the lines there, not God and not, not the heavens. So we have to have the structure, but it is within that bandwidth. So there will be some overlap either from around December 1st or 2nd through the 15th, where there will be Mercury retrograde and moon wobble at the same time. Then the other event related to all of this is the Mars retrograde, which begins December 6th and ends February 23rd. So the inauguration on January 20th will be under the Mars retrograde. So those are the bigger themes that we have to keep our eye on between now and then. And then after that, beginning in January, we kick into the Forecast 2025 book. So what I would say here is if things turned out this week the way that you preferred them to turn out, don't become attached to the outcome. Stay close to source. It's not a man. It's not a system that governs our lives. Your intuition will steer you in the right direction if your pipeline is open and you can hear that still small voice. That's really, seriously, all you need. It will tell you if you need to change this or that. Ask. Jesus said you don't receive because you don't ask. Well, ask. Hey, keep me safe, please. My prayer often is show me the way, please show me gently, and please show me often because I've, I'm thick. I need it. I need to hear it more than one way. And follow the intuition. Follow the synchronicities. Be watching for the signs. Otherwise, it's pretty good practice to stay the course until there's a change of direction. That's a general concept, but that often works. Keeps you grounded. And then if the events of this week did not turn out the way that you preferred, in that same context, that it's not a person or people or systems, and it would be a really good thing, really for all of us, to set intentions for the next four years. From our perspective, your heart to God's heart, your keyboard or pen or journal to God's ears, Make it a personal thing. And don't have the news on in the background when you're doing the exercise. Get still. Get quiet. Tune in. Set intentions. What would you like for your life to be? Not whatever else is going on over there. What would you like for your life to be four years from now? Write them down and then put them in a place where you can get back to them in four years. And next election night or week, pull that list out and see where you are. That, I'm telling you, regardless of who is in what office, is one of the most powerful exercises you can do. And I'm going to go downstairs and do it right now, after I finish this little music sting, because this really inspired me to do it as well. I hope you'll follow along. Oh, I love you guys. Big hug either way. Congratulations if you got what you wanted. And just a real hug of sympathy and empathy and comfort if you didn't. I think all of our viewpoints are significant and they're ours and we have the right to them. And I respect your right to yours. Have a great day. I love you. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye. 